Next, uh, using the config package we just created, we create another package that uses the low-level API that uh, the Go SQLX provides for connecting to Scylla. First, go get Go SQLX package. We also need Go SQL. Go SQL. Go SQL is a package for working with Cassandra, but since both Cassandra and Scylla are using the same wire protocol, Scylla is 100% compatible with Cassandra, it just has more features. Um, uh, we can use the same package for connecting to both. Then let's create, create that package again at the root of the project. Start by importing what we need. Com, not, not sin. Let's have a manager that manages connections to CLI. Um, it'll have an instance of uh, our application's configuration structure. Our manager will have a connect function. Easy, right? Now let's pause and see what connects needs. It needs a key space and the list of hosts to connect to and returns a go SQL X session. As you can see, we use Go SQL for the initial configuration and connection and then wrap it with Go SQL X session. Next, a connect function that is exposed to the consumers of this package.
and another function um, create key space that we can use to create our key space initially for working with the migration package inside GoSQLX um, the, the GoSQLX package provides um, it, it, it requires that you already create your main key space um, before you start using it that's thus the need for this function Now the actual statement, first time writing a SQL statement, folks, in this project, of course. making sure I'm writing it correctly uh, there is no mistake or anything Actually, on uh, second thought, we don't need connect to be part of our manager. It's just a simple standalone function. Before adding our first Go executable in this project, let us have our proposed tables and materialized views written as SQL statements in a file. For that, let us have a migrations there at the root of the project, which will host all the migrations for Scylla. Later, we give the, this directory's path to go SQLX, and it takes care of applying the files in the there for us. But we have to have a unique file name for each migration, and it's best practice to use the current time in the form of a timestamp for the file name. How do we generate one? Like so. Now copy paste um, as the file name. Dot SQL. I already had all the schemas for different tables and materialized views. Uh, views. So let me copy paste them instead of writing them all down, because I'm sure it's it'll take forever. And to quickly go through them one more time. We're going to have our reports table in which we'll store all the information that gets inside our system and two materialized views derived out of that. And finally, a table for storing the messages. Now under cmd slash migration, create a main.go file and let's start using the go sqlx migrations package. You might ask, why are we going to use go sqlx package inside our main file? Well, the answer is because the whole thing is as simple as what you'll see in a sec, at least for now.
After loading a config, let's create an instance of our manager and create the reporting key space. then connect to the Scylla and Keyspace we just created. And creating the tables and schemas is as easy as using migrate the migrate. Now time for testing things out. I already have the command in my history. So here we go. Note that we also have to pass DB URL and key space and migrations directories are executable through environment variables. So it knows what to do. Fingers crossed. Okay, woohoo. Look like looks like everything uh, went fine. Let's go inside our Scylla container and see what's up. How do we do that? With this Docker command. And let's describe everything. You see that we have all we wanted our tables and materialized views with the schemas that we wanted. Now that we're here, let's also try to insert something into the reports table and see how changes propagate to other materialized views. We need UUIDs for report ID and user ID, so let's generate some, like so. Also, for creating that, we need a timestamp. Now let's check uh, what's inside the reports table and its materialized views. I knew something's up.
Whew. This was a long video, but we did it. Thank you everyone for watching and hope this video will prove to be useful to you.